All right, so both good and bad news here. The good news is that the Riot MMO is still going, right? It's still chugging along. The bad news is that it's basically been completely reset. Uh, so Trindamir here posted this, um, I, I believe, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday at five last night. Uh, hey all, we know many of you are hungry for news about the Riot Games MMO project, and we really appreciate your patience and the incredible support you've shown us so far. I'm writing to update you today on where we're at. And before anyone panics, yes, we are still working on the game. After a lot of reflection and discussion, we've decided to reset the direction of the project some time ago. This decision wasn't easy, but it was necessary. The initial vision just wasn't uh, different enough from what you can play today. We don't believe or you all want an MMO that you've played before with a Runeterra coat of paint. To truly do justice to the potential of Runeterra and to meet the incredibly high expectations of players around the world, we need to do something that truly feels like a significant evolution of the genre. This is a huge challenge, but one that our team of deeply passionate MMO players and game development veterans is incredibly motivated to pursue. With this new direction, I'm excited to introduce Fabriso Fabriso. As the new executive producer of the MMO, uh, Fabrice's experience as a player and passion for creating immersive worlds is extraordinary. Having led big projects at Riot, Bioware, and EA, he brings a fresh perspective and a shared commitment to excellence that will guide our team as they continue on this difficult journey. We started laying the groundwork for this pivot some time ago, and over the last year, under VJ Takar's management, we built key components of the technical foundation to create the kind of ambitious game we're talking about. We're grateful for VJ's, uh, for VJ's leadership and that he'll be a part of the game development team going forward as our technical director. Resetting our development path also means we will be going dark for a long time, like se likely several years. This silence will help provide space for the team to focus on the incredible amount of work ahead of them. We understand the excitement and anticipation that surrounds new information, but we ask for your trust during this silent phase. Remember, no news is good news as it means we're hard at work, pouring our hearts and souls into making something that we hope you'll love. Thank you for believing in us and for your patience. All right. Um, so let's, let's talk about this. Um, I guess most MMO players, most people uh, who have ever played an MMO was excited for this. Uh, I know I was because I do think the world of Runeterra can make for a phenomenal game. It sounds to me a little like they they basically overcomplicated the game to the point where um, things just no longer made sense. I'm now sort of wondering about Ghost Crawler's departure, though, because we saw Ghost Crawler leave the project, and when Ghost Crawler was leaving the project, he said that the project was now, like, his job was basically done laying the foundations for the game, and now it would just be the nitty-gritty design stuff that they would have to solve, and he wasn't really interested in doing that. Instead, he wanted to go do his own thing. But now I'm starting to wonder if... Did Ghost Crawler leave because he was no longer... He no longer believed in this project, and that's why he decided to take his stuff and go? Or did Gro Ghost Crawler, did they basically make wrong turns after Ghost Crawler left? So they decided to go in directions that they, that they should not have gone in. The thing that scares me a little about this announcement, though, is the fact that they make this claim where they say, we don't believe that most of you want to play a game, right, that you've seen before just with a Rune Terra coat of paint. Now. In my opinion, that may just be, hmm, in my opinion, that may just be a big red flag, because, well, if you try to reinvent the wheel, you are most likely going to come up short, and the reason you're going to come up short is because, well, you you're trying to reinvent the wheel. The wheel works just fine. Um, and the fact that they hyper-focus on this idea that they don't want to make an MMO that all of us have played before, they want to do something completely unique and different, 
there's only so many ways in which you can make a game completely unique and different before you're completely changing what the game is. Uh, and and that part scares me a little bit. Basically sounded like he didn't agree with what they're doing and that he won't be going dark. And I was limping along as it is. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that there isn't space for innovation within the MMO space, but if your mindset from the off is we want to make something that players have never played before, that becomes a very big problem, right? Because what if the things that you want to change are actually good things? Like players actually enjoy this stuff, but now you don't want to do that because it's been done before. Uh, and now you have to reinvent the way it's done, but the way it's done is done that way because it is the best way to do it. Or maybe it's the only way to do it. Uh, but okay, so Ghost Crawler then tweeted out, uh, this was after the fact, it was also yesterday, but at 7, so two hours afterwards, I wish the Riot MMO well, they have a great world to explore and the team is truly top notch, I will definitely play the crap out of it. Two of the reasons I found at Mountain Studio are 1, I don't want to take 10 years to develop a game, and 2, I want to develop in the open uh, with players along for the journey. Neither strategy is right or wrong. I just know my current approach plays to our studio strengths. No going dark year. Yeah, so from this tweet, though, from Gro Ghost Crawler's tweet, it does kind of sound like he wasn't all too happy with the direction of the original Riot MMO. So the first tweet you could completely ignore. Game developers very rarely flame each other in public. Like, that's very rare. And the reason for it is Greg Street has no guarantee that his studio is going to work. Greg Street has no guarantee that his game is going to work. Should his game fail, he may find himself in a position where he needs another job. And if you're a game developer that has openly torched your old studio, you're done. You're done. No studio will hire you because they don't trust you. If you leave them, are you going to torch them too? So the first tweet here, you can completely ignore. It has no real value. We wouldn't know if the team is actually top-notch. We wouldn't know if he's even actually looking forward to playing the game. It's the second tweet that really gets me, where he says he wants to start his own studio because he doesn't want to take 10 years to develop the game, and he wants to develop the game in the open with players along for the journey. That's the part that I think is most important here, and also the most interesting part of this entire thing. Because that's the part that tells me 10 years to develop a game suggests that that game was probably in development hell long before he even left. Like, the fact that he knew it was going to take 10 years for this MMO to be made suggests development hell had already set in at that point. And two, he wants to do it open with players along for the journey. That part is just completely unique. There's no game currently that I know of on the market that does that. Uh, so that is a unique part um, of game design. We'll have to see if that actually plays out, right? On the campy weird ca uh, characters, as long as I don't have ultra-realistic characters. I don't I don't imagine uh, the Riot MMO would ever go for hyper-realism. I mean, Riot itself, League of Legends, isn't hyper-real. Uh, the, they purposefully go for, all, also like Blizzard, very stylized, because it's what they like. It, it's, it, what, it's what fits Runeterra. Uh, and I know this was years ago when Ghost Crawler was sort of talking about the game. Uh, they were asked, uh, will this game have realistic graphics or stylized graphics? And he said, well, it won't be quite as stylized as World of Warcraft, but it will also not be realistic. So they were going for some kind of in between, which is all fine. You can have pretty decently like stylized games that isn't like World of Warcraft levels of stylization but also isn't hyper-realistic, right? So that's also still fine. I read it as we spent eight years now with the restart of development, the total number of years will be close to 10 years. Abiwar, I don't know, because when he announced that he wants to leave the game, right? He would have had certain ideas in his mind as to why he was leaving. He wrote down why he decided to leave. And the why is because he doesn't want to take 10 plus years to develop a game. That suggests that Already then, that was on his mind. He realized that this game was going to take 10 years to develop, which suggests the game is already in development hell. 
they're already struggling with a lot of issues because they were trying to do something and it ended up not working and now they have to try something new. Making games in that regard can take a long time, especially if you're trying to do something major because you don't know if something is going to work until you do it, play it, and then realize, shit, this doesn't work. And now you've wasted six months on making a new map and the new map doesn't work because something is fundamentally wrong with your game. So, uh, I mean, it could just be that he's talking about current information included, but I didn't take it that way. Do you think Black Desert Online is stylized? Uh, I've not seen a lot of Black Desert Online, but it, I wouldn't say it's stylized. It's definitely more on the realistic side from the graphics that I've seen. It wanted to go for very shiny graphics, um, but that still doesn't mean that it's hyper-realistic. Yeah, I would probably say that it is still stylized because stylization doesn't mean cartoony. It just means that it can stand the test of time, right? Because it's stylized, you didn't go for hyper-realism. So hyper-realism would be cyberpunk. If you look at Cyberpunk 2077, that is a hyper-realistic game. I don't think there's many games that try to. So for example, you have Judy here, right? And this is Judy in the game. That's what she looks like in the game. You can see that is hyper-realistic. The problem that you have with this level of hyper-realism is it doesn't take long before it starts looking like crap, right? Before it starts looking out of date. So people will look back on this game 10 years from now and they'll be like, shit, it was, that was good quality for its time, but it's nowhere near where it is today, right? Because it will age, it's photorealistic, or you're going for hyperrealism. So you are bound to the limitations of the current technology. Um, whereas World of Warcraft, and not just WoW, there's plenty of games that go for a more stylized approach. And that means that the graphics can last for a lot longer. Because technically speaking, World of Warcraft's graphics is, that's a choice. Right? You made a choice to make your game look this cartoony. And I mean, does anyone think the graphics of Tom and Jerry is bad? No, it's Tom and Jerry. When you see Tom and you see Jerry, that's how they look. It's perfectly fine. You accept that because it was stylized as that. Right? That's how you wanted it to look. You don't need anything else. However, if they did try to make them look real, by now it would have looked like absolute ass.